Hello, welcome to this session of Say Yes to Yoga. We're going to start with a breathing exercise. So just make sure you're sitting comfortably and close your eyes. Bring an awareness to your breath and just allow the breath to slowly lengthen and deepen. Breathing through the nose where possible. Notice whether the inhale is the same length as the exhale. Once your breathing has reached a steady rhythm, you can introduce counting. Breathing in, two, three, out, two, three, in, two, three, out, two, three. If you want to increase this to four, you can, or even decrease it to two. Just do whatever feels comfortable for you. Keep the shoulders relaxed. And try to inhale and exhale fully and completely each time. Just allow your breathing to return back to its regular rhythm. And now we're ready to start doing some warm up stretches. We're going to use the breath to help us with the movement. So making sure your legs are either crossed or straight out in front of you. The spine is upright. You're going to breathe in and lift the arms up. And then on an exhale, you're going to bring one arm down and fold over to the side. Breathe in to bring the arms up and breathe out over to the other side. Breathing in, breathing out, in and out. Breathing in and then this time hands down and out. We're now going to do a twist so take a deep breath in and then on the exhale, you're going to twist yourself around to look over one shoulder, twisting through the whole torso, not just the neck. Breathe in to come back and breathe out to twist to the other side. Breathing in to come back, breathing out. Breathing in and out. And back to centre and clasp your hands behind you. Breathe in and push your shoulder blades together and breathe out. Then release, breathe in and out and release. And the last one, breathing in and then folding forwards as we breathe out. Breathe in, stretch your arms all the way up and breathing out, really pushing the fingertips away from you. Then breathe in to come back to sitting and turn yourself into your tabletop position. So this is on your hands and your knees. Wrists are underneath shoulders, knees are underneath hips. And you're going to arch the spine up, allowing the crown of the head to hang towards the floor. And then gently curl the spine in the opposite direction, keeping the shoulders away from the ears. 
and then arching again. Taking it nice and slow. And dipping down, looking ahead. All the while keeping the weight evenly spread out between both hands and knees. Arching a third time. And then dipping down. Then bring yourself back to tabletop. Bring the big toes together. Take the knees out to the edges of the mat and push back towards the heels, bringing the forehead down onto the mat or onto a block or onto your crossed hands. For your wide legged child's pose. And just take a few breaths here. From here you're going to push yourself back up into tabletop, tuck your toes under, breathe in, push back onto the feet, bring the feet towards the hands and slowly bring yourself up to standing. We're now going to work through Surya Namaskar A, otherwise known as Sun Salutation A, beginning in mountain pose. A mountain pose is when your feet are directly underneath your hips, shoulders are low, arms are engaged. Inhale, breathe in, exhale, breathe out to fold forward, hands on the mat. Breathe in to come up onto your fingertips and look ahead. Breathe out to fold forward again. Breathe in to push the feet back. Push the heels down towards the mat and push your hips up and away from you. The arms are at an angle and the fingertips are pressing into the mat. Keep breathing and then come down either onto your knees, which may be more comfortable, or into plank. Then lower the whole body down, stretch the legs out behind you, have your hands underneath your shoulders, tuck the elbows in, then breathe in to push up into your back bend. Make sure to keep a slight bend in the elbows. And release, tuck the toes under. Again, either plank or tabletop. On an inhale, push back into downward dog. And then the exhale gives you the room to bring the feet towards the hands. Inhale to come up onto fingertips. Exhale to fold forward. And then inhale to come up into mountain. Go to do this a second time. And this time I'm not going to focus on the breathing, I'm going to focus on the movement. So reaching the arms up, folding forward, coming up onto fingertips, looking ahead, folding in half, stepping back into downward facing dog, checking the alignment, then into your version of plank. Lowering the whole body down, pushing up into the back bend, keeping the shoulders away from the ears, coming back down onto the mat, tucking the toes under, again your version of plank, pushing back into downward dog. Feeling the stretch on the back of the legs, bringing the feet towards the hands, coming up onto fingertips in flat back extension, 
folding in half once more. And then slowly coming back up into mountain pose. So the third time for this, instead of guiding with the movement, I'll guide with the breath. Inhale. Exhale. 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 Inhale. And you're back in your mountain pose. Now we're going to do a side stretch. So to begin with, you're in mountain pose. Lift the arms up, clasp the hands together and fold over to one side. Just make sure you keep it to the side and you don't go forwards or backwards. Take a couple of breaths here and then bring yourself back up to centre. Going to do another side stretch but this time with the right leg crossed in front of the left. And just make sure you can place the right foot down comfortably flat. Arms up, hands clasped and over. You'll find that you probably can't go as far without feeling too unstable on your feet. But it's this stretch all along here that you're after. Again, just take a couple of breaths. Release the arms. Untangle the legs. Now repeat for the other side. Just remember to keep breathing. And use an inhale to come back up to centre. Cross the left leg over. And it doesn't matter how much of a gap there is between the feet, whether it's quite a big gap or whether you even want to place them closer together. Usually the wider the gap, the more steady you will be. And as always, breathing. It's really easy to forget what you're doing and hold your breath without realising. Back up, release the arms and release the legs. We usually work with poses from the foundation up and come out of them on the top down. This next pose is called chair pose and to make it a bit easier you can have the feet hip width apart or you can bring the feet together and then we bend the knees, we sink down and we can bring the hands to heart centre or we can extend the arms. Sink down any further, if able. Then release the arms and stand. Going to do that again, but bring a twist into it this time. So come back to your chair pose. Bring the hands together. And then you're going to take the left elbow towards the right thigh. If you can't get thumbs to touch at heart centre, you can always bring a fist inside the palm. And then back to centre, stand up if you need to, before we do the other side. back 
to centre. This time we're going to release the hands, just straighten the legs a little, bringing the head down. Then bend the knees again before we bring ourselves back up to standing. A variation on the twist is to extend the arms. So you would come into chair pose once more. And then if you feel comfortable in doing so, you could bring the left hand down onto the mat or onto a block and extend the right arm up. Just make sure the left hand is in contact with something. Then bring the right arm down, you're swapping over. Make sure there's no furniture in the way. Bring both hands down and slowly bring yourself back up and return to mountain pose. We're now going to come into a balance. And the balance is tree pose so starting with your left leg being the balancing leg you're going to bend the right knee take the right knee out 90 degrees keep the toes on the floor if you wish or if you feel stable enough you can bring the sole of the foot up the inside of the left leg still keeping the knee pointed out though the arms can either stay by your side, they can come into prayer pose, you can have them up in the air or you may want to clasp them behind your back. Totally your choice. You might even want to take them out either side for balance. You can also move to use a wall or heavy furniture for stability. While you're in this balance, just make sure that the spine is nice and upright. And all we're trying to do is hold it for just one breath. So not as long as I've been doing it here. And then releasing your own time and we're ready to do the other side. So you're really pushing the whole of the right foot into the mat now. Turning the left knee. And then bringing the foot up. But again, only if you feel comfortable in doing so. And it's a good idea to use a focus point, either something on the wall in front of you or a few feet on the floor ahead of you, just to help keep your focus. in your own time and return to your mountain pose. We're now going to do a one of your two sequence so beginning mountain pose towards the front of your mat and step your right foot back and have the toes on the right foot pointed out 90 degrees. Make sure you're happy with the distance between the feet and then bend your left knee so it's above the ankle. If it goes too far past, that means you can increase the distance between the feet. Turn the hips so they're facing the same way as the long edge of the mat and bring the arms up so that they're parallel with the floor. Just check both arms and make sure you haven't brought them forwards or pushing them back. They need to be in line with the shoulders and with each other. Keeping that left knee bent, you're looking over your left fingertips. If you want to, you can push forward slightly, all the while keeping the legs still. Keep breathing and then on an exhale, allow the right arm to drop and bring the left arm up and turn the palm towards you to look. Keep breathing and then on an inhale come back into warrior two. Then when you feel ready you can bring the left arm 
down onto the thigh, palm facing up, and extend the right arm up, looking up at the right thumb. From here, you can bring the left hand down either onto a block or, if you're able, onto the mat. But just make sure that this right hip stays above the left hip and you don't twist around. Take a couple of breaths here and then breathe in to bring yourself back up into warrior two. Release the arms. Straighten that left leg and bring the right leg forwards. And we're back into mountain pose. And we do exactly the same on the other side. Starting towards the front of your mat, you're going to step the left foot back. Just another quick note about alignment. You should be able to draw a line from the right heel down to anywhere on the inside of the left foot. Bend the right knee, turn the hips again, we're working from the foundation up and bring the arms to parallel. Looking over the right fingertips this time. If you want to push them forwards, you can. And then come back, release the left arm, bring the right arm up and turn the palm towards you. Just check that you haven't straightened that front leg. And then bring the arms back. All the while engaging the muscles in the arms and the shoulders. And you can bring the right arm down to the thigh and bring the left arm up. And then from here, you can bring the right hand down onto a block or onto the mat if you're able to get the hand secure. Breathe in to bring yourself back up into warrior two, release the arms, straighten that front leg and bring the back leg forwards. Returning to standing. We're now coming down onto the mat. Breathe in, arms up. You can include a back bend here if you wish. Breathe out to fold forwards, hands on the floor. You can bend the knees here as much as you need to. The legs do not have to be straight. Step back into downward facing dog. And again, just a quick reminder. You're not trying to have the shoulders over the wrists, you're pushing the hips back so the arms are at an angle. Your heels may be able to touch the floor, as you can see at the moment, mine can't. All depends on how tight your hamstrings are. And many other things. Bring the knees down, lower the body down, push the legs back. Breathe in to come up into a back bend. Take a couple of breaths here. And then come down on an exhale. And you're going to push yourself back up, first of all, into tabletop. And then back onto the heels to come into child's pose. So I'm just going to show you two variations of that back bend, a less intense one and a more intense one. So first of all, lower yourself down. The first one, the less intense one, you can bring your elbows underneath the shoulders, have palms flat, lift the chest up and look ahead. So this is your Sphinx pose. And then the other one, the more intense version, instead of having hands underneath the shoulders, take them 
further down the mat a little, keep the elbows tucked in, breathe in, push up and then come up onto the tops of the feet as well. And he's still looking ahead. And then lower the body down and push back into child's pose. Final part of the session, you're going to bring yourself into a seated position with your legs out in front of you. Breathe in, bring the arms up, then as you exhale you're going to hinge the body forward over the straightened legs. You can bend the knees a little if it helps, the hands just let them rest wherever they naturally fall. And just stay here for a few breaths. And as always, use the inhale to bring the body back up. You're then going to bend the right knee allow it to fall out to the side, bring the arms so they're angled over the left leg and on an exhale slowly fold forwards over the extended leg. Your knee may touch the floor, if not you can always use a block to keep it steady if needed. back up to sitting and repeat for the other side so allowing the knee to fall out to the side angling the arms out the extended leg and on an exhale folding over the straight leg back up to sitting, stretch the legs out into a V shape. Take the right leg, bend it and again you're bringing the sole of the foot to somewhere on the inside of the left leg and use the left hand to slowly reach down either grabbing the lower part of the leg, the ankle or around the toes and bringing the right arm up. So as long as you don't lift yourself up off the mat, that's fine. And then come back upright. And before we go on to the other side, we're going to bring that right hand, extend it out to the side, palm flat on the mat, and push ourselves over onto our knee and extend the arm up. And then using nice controlled movements, we're going to bring ourselves back down, stretch the legs out and repeat for the left side. And this is where you'll find one side is easier than the other or that you can go further on one side than the other. up, bringing the hand down, making sure the arm's nice and straight, rolling over onto the knee and the foot and bringing the arm straight up. And then releasing, stretching 
stretching the legs out wide once more and gently pushing the fingers down towards the ankles. All the while breathing. yourself back up and allow yourself to lie back on the mat with your knees bent now for this pose the heels are in line with the hips squeeze the shoulder blades together have the arms either side of the body palms facing down then breathe in to lift the hips up off the mat And breathe out to come back down and to do that again. Breathing in to lift the hips up. And keep breathing while the hips are up in the air. If you want to clasp hands together underneath you can. Or you can keep the arms where they are. And then bring the hips down when you're ready. Take the arms out wide, bring the feet together and then just gently sway the knees side to side. And then you can bring the knees into the chest and give them a squeeze, gently roll from left to right, massaging the spine and then release the legs, release the arms and prepare yourself for relaxation, usually in Savasana, otherwise known as corpse pose. So that's where the feet are turned outwards, the arms are a short distance away from the body, the palms facing up, the fingers naturally curl inwards and the body is relaxed. As always choose your own relaxation pose. This relaxation technique will focus on the muscles in your body. So working our way down from head to toe we will be thinking about the different muscles with a range of movements such as stretching, tensing and relaxing. To begin, just focus on your breath. Breathing slowly and deeply through the nose if possible. Then allow the air to escape through your mouth. Slow your breathing down, just as we did at the start of the session. We will start by moving the attention to the face. With your eyes closed, squeeze your eyebrows together as if you're frowning. Hold it, then let it relax. Now, still with the eyes closed, try to look surprised. Stretch the eyebrows up and then let them relax again back to their normal position. Now think about your jaw. Are you clenching your teeth or squeezing them together? If so, just see if you can let them relax a little. Your mouth may fall open a little more. Keep those breaths going in slowly through your nose and out through your mouth. Now move on to the shoulders. Can you push your shoulders down as if you're pushing them towards your hips? Then let them come back up to where they were before. Next, bring your shoulders up towards your ears. Then let them go back down again into a relaxed position. And just feel the whole area soften and relax. 
Moving on to the elbows. Try and stretch your arms out straight. Nice and gentle. No need to force any of these movements. Then allow your elbows to relax again. Working our way down towards the hands. Can you stretch your fingers out? Now allow them to relax. Keep breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Continuing down to the hips now and clench your buttocks as tight as is comfortable for you. Then relax. Moving further down to your knees. Are you able to press them down straight? You may need to stretch your legs out if you're sitting or if you're lying down. Think about pressing the backs of the knees to the floor. Then let them relax again. Moving down to the ankles. Point your toes up towards you so you can feel the stretch down the back of your leg and then allow the toes to relax. Going back to the breath, continue to take nice, slow, deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. Take some time to think about all the different muscles in your body and check to see if they all feel relaxed. If there are any tense parts, you may wish to try and stretch those parts and release so that you're feeling completely relaxed throughout your body. Then return once more to your breath. Slowly inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth until you are ready to return to the present. You can come out of relaxation in your own time and that brings us to the end of today's session. Namaste. Thank you.